back for more fun. <laughs> yeah, that's fun with a pH, with another simple acid-base disorder. In this sketch, we'll take a cruise on Sketchy's pleasure boat to cover respiratory acidosis. We'll navigate through the causes of respiratory acidosis, the course of the disorder, and its compensatory mechanisms. Are you ready to get your sea legs? Then all aboard! But before we hit the high seas, let's stop by this lemonade stand, our symbol for acidosis, for a quick refreshment. Recall that acidosis is characterized by increased hydrogen ion concentration in the blood, hence this plus sign lemon on this lemonade stand. And since we're talking about respiratory acidosis, our seafaring grill master is sporting a lung-shaped life vest. Wonder, uh, what's cooking? More like what's smoking. Oof. It's getting pretty tough to breathe in this lemonade stand. <clears throat> in respiratory acidosis, low blood pH occurs when there's a buildup of acidic carbon dioxide that's not able to be expelled by the lungs, represented here by all this smoke, our recurring symbol for CO2. Our grill master won't be abandoning ship anytime soon, though, because as smoky as it is, we run a pretty tight ship here. <laughs> yeah, we're prepared for this. To compensate for respiratory acidosis, the kidneys retain more bicarbonate by increasing its reabsorption and decreasing its excretion. Since bicarbonate is alkaline, more of it around means blood pH will increase. This is why we've called all hands on deck and opened up this rather large kidney-shaped chest full of baking soda, our symbol for bicarbonate. And don't worry, there's absolutely nothing suspicious about transporting kilos of white powder across sea borders, I think. Note that this is a partial compensation, so while the kidneys help stabilize blood pH, it still remains low. Expected laboratory values in respiratory acidosis include low blood pH, high PCO2, and high bicarbonate from metabolic compensation.